Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's summarize what we know about the apparent power and the power factor. So again, there's a relationship between the voltage and the current in phasor format. We can see that there's a phase angle relative to the voltage and a phase angle relative to the current, and that the phase angle between the two, phi, is the phase angle of the voltage minus the phase angle of the current. In this case, we'll have a negative phase angle, and if the voltage leads the current, then in this case, we have a positive phase angle. We realize that if there's a negative phase angle, then the power factor leads. If we have a positive phase angle, then the power factor lags, so we need to remember that. We have an equation describing the power consumed by the resistive portion of the load as being one-half the voltage maximum times the current maximum in the circuit times the cosine of the angle between them, the phase angle between them, where this portion was the apparent power represented by the variable S, and this was the power factor, which typically is written as P times F. Notice that the apparent power can also be written as the product between the root mean square voltage and the root mean square current. Now we want to understand how we go about trying to solve problems whenever we're dealing with the apparent power, the power factor, the average power, and so forth. And later on, we'll also be talking about the reactive power and the complex power. So how do we deal with all that? Well, first of all, we need to realize that the voltage and the current can be expressed in the time domain according to these two equations. The voltage as a function of time is equal to the maximum voltage times some sinusoidal function, typically the cosine of omega t plus a phase angle. And the current as a function of time also can be expressed as the maximum current in the circuit times the cosine of omega t plus the phase angle of the current. And then if we convert that to the phasor domain, we usually will see bold-faced letters like V and I, bold-faced, bold I have trouble saying that, bold-faced V and bold-faced I represent the phasor format of the voltage and the current. Again, when we're dealing with phasor format, we're talking about this V and this I right there. So books typically write it as bold-faced, but often we don't see it as such. And we have to, from context, understand when it's bold-faced and when it's not, when it refers to the phasor format, which is kind of like a vector. A vector has magnitude and direction. And so therefore, these what we call phasor domain format of the variables for voltage and current has a magnitude, V max, and a phase angle. So we have the maximum voltage in the circuit, since it's sinusoidal, so it's a maximum displacement for average, and the phase angle relative to some point in the circuit. So we don't always put the absolute value signs around I max and V max, because it's understood that those are the magnitudes of the phasors. So in other words, the length of the phasors are represented by these particular values right here, and then we have the phase angle, which is represented here relative to typically the horizontal axis. And of course, if you want the phase A, the phasors of the RM, oh, I don't want to write RMV, this is RMS. If the phase, if the phasor of the voltage RMS, then we simply take the phasor of the voltage and divide it by the square root of two. There's one thing that connects all that together, which is the concept of the impedance in the circuit. And again, we can use bold phase letters to indicate that these are phasors. Impedance is, after all, a phasor on this diagram. So is voltage and so is current on this diagram right here. So, but if we see it written like this, it's again understood that these are phasors. Therefore, they have magnitude and direction. So they can be represented by the magnitude of the two phasors and the direction relative to their phase angle. And so we can then see that the impedance is simply equal to the magnitude of the phasor of the voltage divided by the magnitude of the phasor of the current times the phase angle difference between the two, the voltage minus the phase of the voltage minus the phase of the current. And so this is how we're going to figure out everything we need to know about power in various forms. And so we need to know, understand the impedance and how that then leads into the power average. Notice since the impedance is a function of the voltage and the current, and since the power is a function of the voltage and the current, we can then relate these two to one another, and we're going to see some examples of how to do that. And so that pretty well summarizes what we need to know about the apparent power and the power factor.